Wow, the memories, the memories. I mean, I remember playing those, little doing my little DJ thing at the dances and everything. And oh man, and no, right, no, right. no disrespect to Mr. Jackson because I'm sure he can beat me up. But I was, oh, no. I was so in love with you. Oh, especially let me be your angel. I still play that all this time. I'm just like, oh, wow. that's what being in, to me. That's like what being in love is supposed to feel like. That song right, right there. Yes, and you know it's funny because to me. It's like the songs today, some of the songs back in the 80s were just, you know, those were just, the songs were just so different back then, you know? Mm-hmm. It, even the even the lyrics were just, you know, they were more, I, I guess, more centered around love and staying together and, you know, working things out. And and then, the, you know, some of the songs today are like, well, you know, if you want to go, just leave, you know? It's like, right, exactly. You know, it's not about, it's not about staying together. <laughs> Right. Now, before we get to the point where you walked away from it, now you was kind of uh-huh. right in the point where hip hop was starting. What was it like right. being in the, you was kind of right in the mm-hmm. mix of it growing exactly. and fighting with hip hop. What was that exactly. like? Exactly. Yeah. And see, it was, it was, I guess it was somewhat, it was somewhat uh, challenging because at that time, yeah, hip hop was definitely becoming just pretty much taking over, you know, the airways. So there were, were lots of songs that didn't get played. You know, because the hip hop had just taken over, you know, entirely. Yeah, it, it was it was a, a, a quite uh, a interesting interesting time. So um, I always say, real real songs, right. beautiful songs, beautiful lyrics, don't have a way of lasting. True. You know, and there are songs back in the seventies and eighties that we can still listen to today that still sound good. You know, those to me, that's when you know you got a hit record. True. <laughs> you know, absolutely. <laughs> You're very right. Now we're gonna get to kind of bring everybody up to speed you walked away from all this i mean you Uh basically you know having making money living large as we'd say all that good stuff you disappeared and yes i did for a long time well you know as i said before i suffered with bouts of depression and i had money i knew celebrities i toured with the jacksons in in 1981 Uh, for 13 weeks i had the opportunity of meeting michael and the family and that to me was an honor that was the highlight of my career but i was still unhappy you know i just had a void in me that i never understood so as uh, as i began to kind of you know, kind of pray and, and spend time reading the Bible. It's like my my outlook on life began to change. And I had an encounter with God. It was like, you know, God had taken the desire away from me to sing R&B music, and my heart was no longer in it. And at that moment, I told my parents, I told my management company, I told everybody, I said, you know what? That's it for me. I walked away from a number one song, which was Where Do We Go From Here? That song was number one on the Billboard charts for four weeks. That was a big record for us. And and, uh, most people would say, you know, how could you walk away from a number one hit record, you know, and, and just give it all up? God called me, and I answered the call, and I walked away, and I never looked back. Now, is there possibility of gospel cds or anything oh definitely i'm working on some gospel material now good and um i just wrote my my autobiography which is available now i am a minister i minister in word and song i'm speaking at conferences around the united states that's just where my heart is you know and i don't knock r&b music i still listen to some but to be honest with you i don't listen to a lot of it right because I, I'm very careful of what I listen to. Yeah, I, I, I still, I love love songs because I think that God created music. But in my opinion, some music is not good to listen to. I agree. I definitely agree. Yeah. Now, on your songs, I, I studied up on you a little bit before I came, listened to some other interviews and stuff. And I heard in one of your interviews, uh-huh. and I, I can kind of understand this, but then again, as many times as you did it, I'm perplexed, I guess. You said that you forgot lyrics to your songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I um, I did a concert somewhere. I cannot remember where it was, of course, but I was on the stage, and I forgot the words to the second verse. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do here? <laughs> so I just sat there. You know, I was kind of dancing a little bit, trying to play it off. But um, yeah, the people were singing along with me, but um, I, I, I was singing some other words. I don't even know what words I was singing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, they didn't know. They just thought you was, you know, working the crowd. Right, right. <laughs> now you talked about your ministries and all that. Um, from what uh-huh. I saw on your website, it looks like you're you've got a couple of things going on with women and the youth. Would you like to talk yeah. about those? Yeah, I, I love working with kids. You know, that's just that's one of my passions. You know, to go out and try and, and um, you know change it, help 
help to encourage other kids, and, and because I know what it's like to 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 be bullied in school. I was picked on when I was in middle school, and as a result of that, I had to come out of school because you know my my single had been released, and my songs were on the radio, and the, the kids knew who I was, and the teachers even some of the teachers you know picked at me, and I dealt with a jealousy thing. I, wow. I dealt with girls calling me white girl, red girl, yellow girl. Ace's place. <laughs> I was very quiet. People took it in the wrong way. So, yeah, I I know what it's like to be bullied. So what I'm doing now is I'm going back to school. I'm talking to kids about the importance of being a leader, the importance of integrity, because that's another thing, in my opinion, the music industry today, there's not very much integrity in the industry. You know, women tend to sell themselves short when they get on these videos and Mm -hmm. take, you know, most of their clothes off. And it's very, it's very degrading. And it's just, to me, that's not a lady. That's not the way a lady should represent herself, you know, and you you can still be successful in life without, you know, going in a direction. So, as I said before, I go to schools and talk to the kids about, you know, I also talk to them about the music industry, the do's and don'ts. I talk to them about um, abstinence. I talk to kids about um, the importance of finishing school because here in D.C. alone, we have a very high rate of uh, kids dropping out of school. So, in fact, I'm going to school in a few weeks to talk to kids about um, the same issue. So, I just, I just think that, you know, somebody needs to do it, you know. And there are many, many celebrities, in my opinion, that can reach out to and try and make a difference in some of these kids' lives. But, you know, they just, I don't know, they just get so tangled up into themselves and they forget But we as a people, have got to go back and try to reach the next generation and try and make a difference. So that's what my mission is. If I can reach a handful of kids and try and keep them in school, keep them focused, you know, and try and stir them in the right direction, then I know that I've made an impact. Very good. I, I really like that because I, I agree with you with the music. and I mean, right now, I could, yeah. I could have a hit song. I talk about a particular alcohol, being in the club, and boom, I'm a millionaire. But uh, oh, yeah. I'm oh, not yeah. that kind of guy. Now, oh, you yeah. had mentioned about your book. Tell us some more about this book that you have that you have out. Well, yeah, I decided, well, you know, I just wanted people to know the, the, the real truth behind the music industry, the real truth behind my story. Because, you know, when they showed this, this show, um, the air of the show Unsung, right. that was only 45 minutes. So in this book, there are more detailed information about, you know, some of the personal challenges I faced and some of the things I went through, like I said, in school. You know, that stuff was not talked about on the show. So, uh, you know, I talk about, you know, different things as far as, you know, some of the things that they wanted me to do that I chose not to do. The reason why I walked away because of having to, you know, I guess go to the after parties and get high and sleep with this company executive and that, you know, that to me, I'm, you know, if that's what it takes and, you know, I can't be a part of that because right. I'm a lady and, and I respect myself and I, I'm a woman of character. So, as I said before, oh. this book is just basically gives people an idea of some of the challenges I've really faced as a child star. And, and as, as I said before, when I toured with Michael and Michael Jackson and his brothers, I actually got an opportunity opportunity to meet him and talk with him and, you know, kind of share, you know, some of that being a child star. People don't understand how stressful it is being a child star. So doing this book, I just wanted people to know a lot of things that, that Unsung did not mention. And how does somebody find this book? Can they go to Barnes and Nobles, or is it just online, or what? Yeah, it's it's in store. Well, actually, the book it will be in stores within two weeks. Okay. And um, you can actually go to my website and order it also because I am self publishing. So I do have a team of people that um, mail the books out. The book is thirteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Okay. Yeah, it's just I just want people to know the the do's and don'ts about the music industry. <laughs> true. True. Now. <laughs> I have a side note question. It's just, again, these things just pop in my head. You've met Michael. You've met the Jacksons. Uh-huh. I've always wondered, mm-hmm. behind the curtain, or as we say in wrestling, kayfabe, behind the right. curtain, does Michael talk more? Did he talk more like, yo, bring me some chicken? Or was he always that, hi, how you doing? Boy? Was that just a put on or was he really that no, 100%? No, 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 no. Michael was always very soft-spoken. In fact, Michael was very, very shy. And I remember, you know, specifically when we would go backstage after the show, we would go in the dressing room and we would talk. And because I was shy, he was shy. We talked, but we did not have long conversations. And I remember, you know, 
he he did take a liking to me, and I and I think because you know he saw that I was a little girl, young lady. I was fifteen when we toured together, mm-hmm. and I think that he saw, you know, he probably saw some something in me, and that's why they contacted me, my management company, to open for them. But yeah, you know, Michael was very shy, but he also was very down to earth. He never had, in my opinion, he was not a child molester. He was a kind, kind soul. You know, it's unfortunate because when you when you reach a level of success, it's almost like people can try. They'll try with, with everything they have in them to try and put you know these negative things on you and say that you you're this way or you did that. When most of it is false, it's untrue. You know, and it's unfortunate. But in many cases, people cannot handle other people's success. I agree. I, I you see it a lot in sports, yeah. especially today. Yeah, with the internet, Michael kind of went. Right. Through both of those stages. Now, yeah, they, 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 I mean, they, they slaughter him. They, they, you know, slash his character. And it was just terrible to sit back and watch those things and to hear the harsh things that were said about Michael. Because I know for a fact, you know, Michael was not that way. Now, was there any artist, and, and again, I know you've left that world, but back in that day that you wanted to work with, that maybe you didn't get to work with, that you thought you could have made good hits or quality music together? No, I work with everyone I, I think that I was supposed to work with. Okay, very good. Well, we're coming to the end here, and I'd like to give you the the mic, if you will, and uh, just tell us what what you got coming up in the future, projects, etc., where to find out all this information about Stacey Lattisaw. Take us home. Well, um, as I said before, I'm currently doing um, conferences around the United States. I'm speaking at women's conferences, churches. I'm speaking at youth conferences. I'm also working on my gospel project. Um, I have a women's ministry. I have a youth program. I work with kids. I also am opening a music center here in Maryland oh. in which I'm going to help a lot of people to network and come together because we meet lots of people in the area that can sing and dance and act and, you know, even rappers, but they cannot seem to, you know, make the right connections. So this music center is going to be a facility where they can come and network, perform, meet other people, meet entertainment lawyers. And, you know, it's just one of our ways of helping other people and also giving back to the community as well. Very good. And what's the website that they can go to? Uh-huh. The website is www.stacylattisaw.net. Very easy to remember. And my remember. office number where I can be reached is 301-485-8507. And they can also find that number on your website, correct? Yes. Okay, good. All the contact information is on my website. Good, good. Wow. First is Ace Place. We knocked it out the park. Great pleasure to have you. Now, the only question you didn't answer, you giggled. What's that? I really need to know. You're not a Redskins fan, are you? Oh, I'm not a football fan. So. Okay. <laughs> I can live with that. Better that than being a stinking Redskins fan. Thank you. Oh, no, that's terrible. (laughs) That is awful. That's the Cowboys coming out through me, though. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Well, again, thank you for being on Ace's Place. This has been such an honor. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Church boy! Oh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Stacy, because I sure enjoyed doing it. That's it. Ace's Place is in the books. We're going to see you when you come back next week. And always remember, if you forget the ACE, it's cool. You be sure to remember G-O-D. You feeling me? Kirk's going to take us home, y'all. Ace's Place. See you next week.